What's up everybody? Arg the Pirate here, and today I want to talk about Redman. Because Rev is an ability carry, you can build him either with crit chance or with ability pin. Either way is good. I prefer crit chance so you can still keep that lifesteal while doing maximum damage with your face. Now pick up the Arch Magnus and we'll get right into this deck. Now I have three starting cards for my Revenant deck. I've got two five point Magstone gems and a six point Adamant Edge. I then follow that up with a 10 point Impact Hammer and a 10 point Spear of the Rift Hunter. Now one thing to note about Revenant is there's no just exact way, hey this is how you have to build. You can go into your Blade of Agora very early on if you would like, as well as stacking more crit or even my Thirst Fang grabbing that lifesteal early on. The key things to note is I have 60% crit, 20 lifesteal, and that 100% crit bonus. All right, let's get into some gameplay. Now, I don't really want to spend a whole lot of time talking about how I believe Revenant is overpowered. I'm sure he will be receiving a nerf fairly soon especially since they're trying this new every nine week kind of tuning patch thing and i believe that nine weeks is coming up for the next patch now if you see here i go ahead and let face know hey the gold buff is all yours unfortunately i'm yet again in another team where we don't really work well together our phase doesn't even link her tether to me until like 10 minutes into this match so i've kind of just got to play on my own but revenant really strives at doing this since he does have his ultimate that is either a great escape or an isolation tool where he can you know just pick one enemy to focus on or you know run away from without having to deal with the rest of the team it makes it where Rev can actually play by himself fairly well. Now I'm doing a terrible job getting these last hits at the beginning here, but that is really important as a carry. Getting those last hits and getting your farm, you know, you don't need to worry about focusing the offlane hero near as much as getting those last hits on the minions. Now Revenant can be hyper aggressive since he does have that max attack speed and really the reload speed is so short and it can be used in stagger with abilities so you can almost completely negate his reload if you you know spend a little time with him and learn you know hey use your mark shoot your four shots use your obliterate shoot your four shots and you know maybe do an ultimate afterwards or you know the other way around really but you can you know kind of negate his reload speed by simply using your abilities now just a few minutes later we end up getting our first kill their countess was i'm not exactly sure maybe retreating maybe securing the river buff and just got pushed back towards me a little bit further but FaZe and Morgesh were kind of you know poking at this countess right here I was able to just hit her with an obliterate and it absolutely destroyed her now one thing to note about obliterate is you have to isolate the target if they're surrounded by minions you're gonna miss you know maybe even all of your hits with that ability so your target needs to be isolated you can either do this with you know your ultimate or simply kill all the minions before you use your ability or you know just catch the enemy out in the open by themselves now since phase is not really playing as much of a 
support to me as she is the other members of the team, I'm gonna take it upon myself to rotate to a different lane. I down that tower and I really don't wanna push up that far. So I'm gonna head over to the off lane. Maybe she'll cycle over there and we can get a 2v2 lane going and hopefully our Fang Mao will head over to our safe lane you know, of course, that didn't work out that way, but that was my idea behind it. Now, here in the off lane, it's Muriel and Sparrow. And Muriel does a great job of countering Revenant with her bubble. You know, she can really negate almost all that obliterate damage early on, which is great. But since I'm building a crit build, you know, I'm really going to more focus on doing damage with my basics over doing damage with my abilities. So late game, I'm just going to be able to shred her shield, but early game, she is able to, you know, negate a lot of this damage. The next five minutes or so are pretty much early game, you know, farm, but I am able to pick up this black buff and then head over to this countess and get a fairly easy kill on her you know i'm pretty sure my black buff might have killed her there but if she somehow was able to get away from me morgesh had her dot on her too so there there was no chance she was getting away now i go into this tower and i start taking tower damage and i'm not exactly sure why so i back out and sure enough kwong had invisibility buff and he got right in front of me, absorbed that first shot from me, so I was getting hit with the tower and he managed to get a fairly successful gank on me and they ended up pushing Morgesh back as well. A few minutes later I'm in mid and I'm able to actually down this tower. There, Kwong, he should have left this tower once he saw that it was gone, but for whatever reason he stayed in, I managed to pick up that kill. Now, I'm going after this Wukong now, and I really should have ulted him right here. Instead, I was chasing him, and I ulted him just too late, and he ended up getting our Morgesh. I probably could have saved her, but at the same time, I might have, you know, not survived either. So, we didn't, we didn't come out with the win on that, but, you know, it's okay. Now I head over to this Muriel hoping I was going to be able to kill her. Unfortunately, she put her bubble up and was able to tank that damage. I circle back around to this tier 2 and, you know, hopefully we can put a lot of pressure on this and maybe get some damage on it. Now I'm really starting to snowball at this 26 minute mark. I'm 8-1-5. and five. I've gotten the Raptors a few times. I'm 41 card points in and I'm just really able to, you know, walk all over these teams. And if you see here, I marked, ulted, obliterate, and one-shot this Sparrow, and she almost didn't have any time to react before I was able to down her. We go in on this tier two tower, and their Countess jumps in, and I make short work of her as well. We managed to get a tier two with a double kill, you know, we're really kind of able to just go out of control at this point. Now, I was trying to back right here, but the enemies really closed in on us. Our phase rotated over to me. She pulled me out. I actually was able to pick up this purple buff, and I said, hey, you know what? Let's go back in. Let's, you know, secure all these kills. I end up... Uh, you know, getting this Wukong down, phases here really kind of throwing me around, so it's really, you know, distracting to them. And then their Kwong, me and him dance around a little bit. I just can't seem to hit him. But uh, we end up get, securing this kill as well. And, uh, you know, I'm now 12, 1, and 5, and we're just at the point now we can't be stopped. Here at 31 minutes, we're in the mid lane. Uh, we just got done putting a lot of pressure on, but we're going to go ahead and retreat a little bit. 
you know, this mid lane is kind of getting a little wild. I'm going to go ahead and back and go clear up this uh, left lane because our inhib is about to be pushed. I go ahead and put my crit bonus on and luckily my team was able to get an actual team wipe at that point. We've got our safe lane inhibs being pushed pretty good right now and they're actually about to down the mid-tier inhib. So we made a lot of really good progress. That was a great play on their part. And, you know, luckily I was able to get back in time to clear out that wave. You know, I really wish I could have stayed in the fight and, you know, sec help secure those kills, but I wasn't needed. And we did need somebody to clear that out. So I took it upon myself to make sure it happened. So here I am working on this last inhib and I noticed their uh, Sparrow is attacking Prime right now and I'm gonna head over there just in case. Now I ran past this Countess thinking maybe she might have been too scared to deal with me but she wasn't <laughs> so she ended up getting me my second death of the game. You know Countess is really just a ADC deleter so you always need to be careful of her and the best way to deal with her is to just run away just back turn around and run straight back the way you came if you get close to her she can use her shadow slip to engage or you know if she's got a stab link you know that stab link's distance or range is very long so you definitely just want to stay away from her at all costs once I get back in lane, we're able to make our final push. And this is gonna be it. You know, we really had a lot more going for our team. We were getting these kills. There was actually quite a few solo kills on both team side. You know, we didn't really get into any big team engagements, but we were always coming out on top of, you know, the engagements. As this match wraps up, I'd just like to say, if you enjoyed this video, show me some love, leave me a comment. If there's anything you'd like to see or want me to explain, let me know and I'll be sure to get back with you. I had a great match ending 14-2 and 6. Well, that's going to wrap it up. I'll see all y'all in the next video.